Before I get into the video, I need to address the elephant in the room. I don't often get involved in internet drama, but sometimes I have to in order to protect my brand. So as some of you know, I photoshopped my friend Stealth Omato's face onto the Queen of England. I innocently did this to boost engagement on my last video. Mato didn't appreciate it, and he went ahead and photoshopped my face onto Mia Khalifa's body, which really upset me as I'm pretty sure she's had premarital relations before. I guess it's official, Stealth Omato and I are beefing. I ask that you all please take the high road though, be mature, and if you see him in the street, please physically assault him. Thanks guys, we have the best community in the world here. Meet Thick Man, a retired assassin who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are the boys, 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 and together they form a feared gang known as the Sons of Virgins. These are their stories. Bruh. I wake up in my auto shop ready to kill some kids because that's kosher in GTA Online. I would never try and kill kids in the real world as I imagine they'd be surprisingly fast and would escape and tell their parents who'd tell the cops and you'd wind up in an interrogation room trying to explain why you had a rope, duct tape and a straight back knife in your car. It's time to go and meet the boys. I find Will and he's driving Shaniqua. Shaniqua is obviously the ute and it was the first ever vehicle I purchased in GTA Online. Mine was painted green so it wasn't as racially insensitive but she was a good car. A bunch of gangsters proceed to attack us because they're jealous. They're part of the family street gang and it's sad that they went straight to violence without first exploring alternative conflict resolution strategies. Read a book. We go and meet Marto who's also driving his car and so naturally I blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're literally on fire. <laughs> Reminded me of the scene of the scene in Fury where that you just reenacted the scene from Fury, dude. If you haven't seen Fury, that was a perfect recreation of an iconic scene. In order to get ourselves mentally prepared for the prison heist, we decide to hit the golf course. This is also great for our mental health because we can't go outside as we're in lockdown. I've been in lockdown for three weeks, and I'm not joking, Carbo and Mato have been in lockdown for 248 days. I'm lucky not to be living in their state right now, but please pray for my boys and maybe write a nice message for them in the comments. I've just committed capitalism. The nice messages will boost my video's engagement and help me get views, and I think that says a lot about society. Let's segue to an exciting golfing segment. I love the tribal tattoos. You're like the whitest guy I know. <laughs> if you hit this, you win everything. You can have Anna. If you win this, you get Anna. She's like, I'm just people wow. traffic her to you. Yeah. So all you gotta do is just put the ball in the hole, Will. It's not that hard. Oh, he's done it! Boys. <laughs> he's done it! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, I may have just bet you in a game of GTA Golf to Will and, um, he hit the shot, so you're his now. Sorry, say that again. I bet you in a game of virtual golf to Will, and he won, so now you're his. His what? <laughs> you're his. Like, you're his. Oh, <laughs> you're his person, I don't know. Okay, I'll pack my bags. She sounded relieved almost, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Now feeling energized and relaxed, it's time to break into prison. After dicking around for an additional 45 minutes or so, we head towards the auto shop. Some of you might know a content creator and a professional speedrunner called Dark Viper AU. He's a good mate of mine, but I've been subtly trying to push the narrative that I'm the better speedrunner than him. I've never actually attempted to speedrun anything, but I'm not going to let that get in the way of my agenda. Okay, who do you think's a better speedrunner? Me or Dark Viper AU? Dark Viper? Nah, it's what, have you, you ever got... speedrun anything? <laughs> I'm trying to push a narrative that I'm the better speedrunner and you guys aren't you backing not. that up. Yeah, but it's a narrative I want to push. <laughs> Heavily. <laughs> Alright, Jeff. Sorry. <laughs> let's, let's, re, let's redo that, Jeff. Ask yes. me again. Hey, do you think... Who do you think's better? Dark Viper Dark or me? Dark Viper is better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like, dyslexic the question. I didn't even get it out. Hey, I dyslexic the question. <laughs> we arrive back at the auto shop, and we couldn't be more ready. Well, maybe not Marto, as he's curled up in the fetal position, questioning his life choices. Hashtag pray for Stealth Omato. Our first mission is to get our contact, Little Lil D purposely sent to prison so we have a contact inside the facility. Lil D wants us to first help him with some of his errands. The big guy only has a two-seater car though and so of course I try to take the boys with me but they have terrible balance. This is probably one of the saddest moments that's been captured and put on the internet. 
they'll have to take a separate car. It turns out his errands are pushing drugs and I can't help but feel like we've been swindled. We decide to big dick the narcotics deal by shooting some bullets, but Mato decides to use a grenade launcher, therefore killing everyone and failing the mission. On top of that, he still can't balance. Maybe he really is the Queen of England. Thick, handsome, but terribly uncoordinated. I go and grab Lil D again and help him with his deals. The great thing about pushing dope is that it's profitable, yet also a victimless crime. Meanwhile, the lads have been getting themselves a new ride. Are you ready to see how fabulous we look right now? I'm ready. Hey, fabulous. <laughs> 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 Alright, we're gonna go to this gang hideout. Lil D may have bitten off more than he can chew here, as it looks like he's selling straight to the Los Santos Vargas gang. Predictably, it goes horribly wrong. You might be thinking, hey Pelly, how do you know so much about drug deals? Well, I actually used to sell the devil's lettuce. I was basically the Australian Pablo Escobar. You see, I got transferred to a really Christian school halfway through my education, and a lot of the students there were super innocent. Like these kids had never seen a bad thing in their life. All of a sudden, they wanted to experiment with alcohol and weed, and that's where Pablo Pelly came in. I'd buy the goods off my public school friends and then traffic it across to the private school and sell it for inflated prices there. I'd sell one puff of a joint to kids two years older than me for like $10 and they'd thank me profusely. Anyway, we drop Lil D at the police station so he can turn himself in and then eventually get sent to prison. We then head back to the auto shop. Stop right there, burglar. <laughs> Watch out. Stop right there, burglar. <laughs> Stop. You sound like an NPC. We have got you surrounded. Quick, follow him. Why do you sound like a robot? They have actual Quick, voice actors. Him. They're not robots. Stop right there. Quick. Why, why are you putting on a robot voice? <laughs> you sounded more like an NPC when you weren't trying to be an NPC. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> It's time for the second heist preparation where we must steal a ramp truck so we can jump cars into the prison. The good news is Jezo decided to join us. Every friend group needs someone like Jezo. He's a top bloke, but also a weapon at any game he seems to play and he carries our group on his shoulders like he was a Tibetan Sherpa. We arrive at the movie studio to steal a ramp truck and start eliminating enemies. Mardo proceeds to pull out his grenade launcher and I'll admit I also got a little carried away. We destroy absolutely everything again, including the truck we're here to collect. A great energy, but change is needed. Pull out a melee weapon. No, melee weapon. I don't think oh, I... Sorry, <laughs> did I fucking stutter? No, nothing explosive. You're being down... You're being, you're being downgraded to a torch. Stop right there. I got that, you cornered. That's your... <laughs> this is your life now. <laughs> Take two, it's dealing the ramp trucks and the dodgy malakas have perched up in the drains. Amato and I exit the car and rush the enemies with our torches out, which is low-key stunning and brave. Whenever I get torches, I think of fleshlights because I always get ads for them. Not even on adult websites or anything, I get them emailed to me. I also get a lot of Christian dating sites always emailing me that I've apparently signed up for. You guys are very funny. Anyway, the boys and I were talking the other day and we came up with an invention that I honestly think could take the adult toy market by storm. Fleshlights that are also flashlights. We'll call them fleshlights. It's so genius that I'm surprised 5 minute crafts haven't already done it. We steal the ramp truck as Mato majestically commutes to prison. With Jezo in a helicopter, I realise I have a chance to do something kind of cool. There's no real point to this, but I feel like it's important to make your own fun sometimes. Like for example, you're taking out the trash but it's dark, so you take out your flashlight and then realise you're alone. Bam, flashlight comes in clutch. I need to pattern that ASAP. We head back to the auto shop as it's now time to break into the prison. The description for the final part of this mission gave us all brain aneurysms. Get in, clip them, and get these fat ass out of there. We about to hit them rats with Lil Pied Piper shit. <laughs> we take off in our cars and get ready to jump into the prison yard. We all line up as we want to make sure this is as cinematic as possible. I feel as if the prison might also want to brush up on their security a little bit. I don't know how long this ramp truck has been parked here for, but the fact that no one sounded the alarm since we rocked up is worrying. Not quite the remarkable entrance I had envisaged, but fortunately I'm a bit of a wizard with iMovie and I was able to seamlessly splice the two clips together. We drive around the prison looking cool for a while before eventually locating the targets. Gone are the days of slipping one of the inmates a packet of cigarettes in exchange for shanking someone in the shower. The future of prison murders is absolutely sick drifts. We even stop using guns for a while and only take down targets with our vehicles. Then in a moment of pure sadness, Stealtho Carbo dies and we don't have any lives. 
maps. We continue on to the last target, but the big girl is smarter than the others and has gone up high where our cars can't do sick drifts. We head upstairs and I try to organize a quick team building exercise whereby we all shoot this guy multiple times with our shotgun at once. The stealth Omato, however, has other ideas. With boys 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 dead everywhere, I can safely say that today is comparable to 480 BC where 40,000 Persians drowned in a single day. We escape the prison by shooting the control panels next to the gate because that's how control panels work. And trust me, I'd know. I'm the guy who invented fleece lights. Our boy Lil D is being transported in a prison bus so that he can get the electric chair. This seems a bit much for a guy who turned himself into the police station, but he doesn't have to worry as we're en route. I take out the driver and see that Lil D is the only person on the bus, yet he still chose to sit in the middle and not the back. I respect sitting right at the front because that's efficient, and obviously at the back because then everyone knows you're a fully sick drift king, but sitting in the middle on an empty bus is like putting milk in the bowl before your cereal. Maybe little D should be locked up. We arrive at the drop off, have an awkward cutscene where Thick Man's glasses are off, which is a violation, and then receive a cool $157,000 for our troubles. Not bad. I'm sure quite a few of you already know, but Stealtho Carbo has a YouTube channel. If we could all please go to his last video and leave a McDonald's order, so that he wakes up to a bunch of orders, that would be great. He's one of my closest friends and makes great content, so definitely recommend checking him out. I love you all. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.